no, but I'm losing my investments. Let me call him. Look, when it comes to business, put your ego away. Put your ego away. Let me call him. After all, what do I stand to lose? Hello, Ko. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Hey, Ko. Musa, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Long time. <laughs> yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm even at the airport um, catching a flight. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then please let me quickly run this by you. Um, okay. You I'm know my you. current condition. My business is failing because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hear. Uh, I was thinking of going for a loan, but uh, I don't know how, since you have the connections and the contacts. <laughs> All right, Musa, listen. Uh, let me WhatsApp you a certain contact. Okay. Get in touch, and um, I think they, are, they will be able to help you. Okay. All right, all right. So you send it now, right? I'm sending it now. Okay, to okay. Your phone. Thank you very much. Go the boy. All right, <laughs> bye. See you later. All right, bye. Hey, I'm lucky enough. This guy did not laugh at me. Anyway, let me rush to the bank before. Okay, he sent the message. Uh, okay, I know this bank. Let me quickly go there. Yes, I'm a. Did we say Saturday or Friday? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, Friday, I'll check. <laughs> yes. What time? No, how about three? Yeah, I have a lot of... Um, I'll call you back. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, how may I help you, sir? The condition I find myself in right now, nobody can help me except God. Hey. Yes. <laughs> so what can I do for you? Good. That is what you should have asked before. <laughs> Let's take it again. Ask me again. What can I do for you? Voila. <laughs> C'est ça. <laughs> uh, you see, um, words cannot express the quantum of favor that I need from you. Favor? Yes, favor. Well, have a seat, Mr. Musa Moro Tijani is the name. Mr. Tijani. No, 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 no. My, my dear, don't call me Mr. Tijani. That is my father's name. But you just mentioned it as. But Refer to me as Musa. Mr. Musa. Ma, what's your name? Abna. Abna. Abna yes. for more heart. Pa, 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 pa. AB for short. Don't, you don't have to add Mr. to every name. It's just Musa. Ah. I'm sorry, Musa. Voila. Please have a seat. No, uh, I prefer to stand up. Oh, I'm mm. sorry, but this is a bank, and it's part of our regulations. You can't stand. Oh. Did I say this place is a farm? No, did I say it's a carpentry shop? Mm -hmm. Of course I know it's a bank. I say I prefer standing. Why do you want to force me to sit? It's my leg, so not yours. I'll stand. Okay, that's fine. Well, anyway, Musa, so how can I help? Sorry. What can I do for you? You see, um, I'm an agro businessman, a successful one as such. Oh, okay. And yes, um, due to COVID, I'm sure even your bank is struggling because of COVID. Yes. So my business, I need some money, you know, in the form of a loan to invest in my business. Oh, you are the one Mr. Ko Nimo spoke about. Ko Nimo. Oh, you mean call the boy? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's my small boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. So, Musa, can I add the title, Mr. to your name No, now? no, no. Forget about the title. <laughs> uh, like I said, I am here for money to invest in my business. Oh, okay. That's fine. Mr. Konimo told me you were coming. I actually had a meeting, but I had to cancel just to make time for you. Wait. You canceled your meeting because of me? Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> Banks, I hope you not charge me for that, oh. <laughs> no, don't worry. You don't owe anything, okay? It's just the way we treat our valued customers. Valued customers. I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Mm. So, have you ever taken a loan before? No, this is my first time. Oh, okay. Now, the first requirement for applying for a loan is to have an account with the bank and have a minimum deposit of 2,000 Ghana cities if the amount you are requesting for is 1,000 cities thereabouts. So, the higher your savings, the higher the amount you can request for. Uh. Yes, but we can still look at zero account and still give you a loan. Okay. If you have something to put down as collateral and have someone to guarantee for you, well, fortunately for you, Mr. Konimo has vouched to do that. So. Ah, okay. Uh, God bless him for that. God <laughs> bless him. Yes. Now, um, there are a few things you need to know when okay. you are applying for a loan. Okay. 
First, you should decide on the amount you need. The amount you borrow should be based on the expenses you are trying to cover and your income. So, have you considered Oh, that? yes. I need a mere $250,000. Okay. Second, for a small business in the process of borrowing money to continue operating their business, the business owner is responsible for paying the principal amount and the percentage charge on interest. Okay. Third, a repayment schedule is established for the payments of the principal amount and the interest. So, Meaning? Uh, yes. It means at the time the processing is done, we set timelines for the repayment of the loan plus the interest. Oh, okay. That's yes. good. But there are so many other loans we give out depending on the business and its ability to repay debt. Each has advantages and disadvantages depending mm. on the risk of the business and the stage in the life cycle. Okay. I see. Yes. However, financing can be done uh, for a maturity of less than a year for a short term or a maturity of um, a maturity of more than a year for long term <laughs> <laughs> thank you that's smart uh, thank you. also loans can be secured backed by any form of collateral 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 yes. collateral hmm. and i can use anything right well anything of value that can be used to cover the payment value good before my grandfather died he left a priceless antique war clock. I guess I can use that as collateral. <laughs> uh, Musa. Yes. See, unfortunately, the bank decides what can be used as collateral and what cannot. And in your case, the priceless antique. Yes, the the priceless antique uh, war clock cannot be used in this application. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Oh, you can use your car as collateral. Madam, my cars have broken down, including the ones for the factory. Well, your house, perhaps. My house. My house. No, 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 no. What did you say your name was again? Abena. A.B. for short. Yes. A.B., don't ever mention my house. Mm, mm. My father even died because of that house. And you want... Wait. Okay. Ah. Who... How do you know Konimo? He's a board member. Board member of your bank? Uh-huh. This same Konimo is my competitor in business. And he was the one that directed me to come here. <laughs> Reading in between the lines, you want to connive and take away the house from me. Oh, no, 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 no. no. no As a matter of fact, the house is worth a million dollars. A million dollars. The, the loan I'm coming for is only $250,000. Mr. Mu no, sorry, Musa. Uh -huh. Nobody's laying any claims on your father's, your grandfather, your house. Uh -huh. It's just it's a just way what? to make sure that you pay back the loan. It's, it's ah. just the terms for the Have loan. Have I said I will not pay? Look at me. Uh, hello, hello, look at me. Take a closer look at me. His Royal Highness. Do I look like someone who will take a loan and not pay back? No, no. But unfortunately, a lot of people look like they take loans and not and and pay back, but they don't pay back. So, it's it's just a requirement. Me, sorry, Musa. Eh. Yes, please. Ah, uh, I see. Just a requirement. Yes, please. Uh, no problem. Huh. Thank God. Uh, so, Musa, now since we've agreed on the collateral, mm. can I proceed? You can proceed. But this okay. one that you are starting with, my house, let me ask. What are the advantages and disadvantages going forward? Well, that's a very good question. I know, I'm a smart man. <laughs> yes. Now, for the advantages, mm -hmm. getting a loan does not dilute your portion of ownership. You still have 100% rights to your business. Good, good. Second, the bank has no claims on future profits. It's all yours. Mm. Third, we offer flexible repayment options and collateral. <laughs> like my house. <laughs> yes, but if that doesn't work for you, we can also come up with other alternatives that will be convenient Voila. for you. Voila! C'est ça! <laughs> C'est ça! <laughs> no problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, it's okay. We, we can continue. That's fine. But you have to hurry because I have okay. a meeting with sure. the French ambassador. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay. So now um, the disadvantages mm -hmm. you should know before. Disadvantages of the loan. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, mm -hmm. Loans must be repaid because it's a borrowed money and must be paid back. An interest. Exactly. <laughs> so, sir. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, since you've understood everything, yeah. I'll just help you fill the forms. Okay. Uh, but we are going to need your, your business certificate, mm -hmm. your bank statement, and your business plan. I have everything intact. I can bring them over tomorrow if you want. That's nice. So we will look through the document, and in 48 hours, we will call you for your loan. Oh, 48 hours. Ah, madam, like... My horse is in a hurry. Me poor corporate them. I want money quickly to push this business. Why 48 hours? It's just a way to certify the loan before we release it to you. Eh. Eh. Uh, no problem. If I've been able to wait a whole season for rains for my crops, 48 hours will come right now. No problem. No problem. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, please sign here. Mr. Konimo will pass through this afternoon to fill his portion. All right. Okay. So, is that all? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. <laughs> I must say that I like how you took time to explain to me. You are very tolerant. Uh, I'm <laughs> I just know. doing my A job. A lot of people today. cannot contain me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing my job. Uh, Businessmen, we are very sharp. Everything is snappy. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Eh? Thank you, uh, too. It's nice talking to you. Oh, that's why you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's not nice talking to me, Bia. <laughs> oh. You think I didn't know that you were shaking when I was filming here? Oh, it's fine, Mr. Hey. Mr. Yes. Don't report me to your husband. Oh, no. <laughs> He's home, I guess. No, he's deceased. He's what? He's dead. He's, oh, we thank God. I'm sorry, I mean condolences. Uh, so, um, it means you are single? With seven kids, sir. Seven kids? Mm. Oh, I have worked with ten kids before. We can manage. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> uh, and how long have you been single? About seven years, sir. Everything is seven, seven, seven for you. <laughs> no problem, eh? Uh, uh, thank you once again. Okay, Evie. you're welcome. Okay. So we'll call you in 48 hours, okay? Abena, in 48 hours, if you don't call me, me now, come. <laughs> because, look, when Mohammed refused to go to the mountain, the mountain went to Mohammed. I need the loan to finance my business. Sure. So if I don't hear from you, you will hear from me. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> That's anyway, fine. We will so definitely call you. No problem. No okay, problem. be Sefini? safe. Sefini. <laughs> Sefa, Sefa. <laughs> au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> you can have your seat. Sure. Thank you. Oh, yes. I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, I had a client. Okay. Okay, thank you. Pascal. Yes. Good. So everything is in place. Cessa, cessa, cessa. <laughs> And um, how about the tractors? They are working perfectly. Okay. All right. Good, good. We'll do that later. All right? Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <sighs> you see, it is not a bad thing going for a loan to finance your business. Don't be afraid. Hmm? It is good to know the appropriate sources of financing your business. And it's also good to know how to access those financing options and the pros and the cons. That's all. I have gone for a loan to finance my business. I know the advantages and disadvantages. Armed with this knowledge, I know my obligation and work towards it. Now my things are going perfectly fine. Tractors, everything going shh. And I'll pay the collateral, uh, the, the loan, I'll pay it back. The collateral, they will not take it. Everything will be fine. Hmm? Until we meet again, I have an appointment with the French ambassador. <laughs> Au revoir, c'est ça, voilà. <laughs> Hello? Oui, mademoiselle, oui, oui, c'est ça. <laughs>
C'est ça, Kawi Klafo. Au revoir, monsieur. Au revoir, au revoir. I think those of you who missed your French classes, you can go back to him. He can give you a few expressions before you meet the ambassador the next time. <laughs> so we are very, very grateful to Latif Abubakar for such amazing, he's a playwright for both plays. Um, if he's around, can you just wave? I know he's somewhere at the back. Okay, that's Latif Abubakar. Amazing playwright for these plays. Um, so we're going to have the next session as the banks get ready to to come up stage. I believe the stage will be set for them by special assistants. But just by way of quick recap, I, I, a few points that came up in the conversations, and I believe that questions will be coming up around them. Uh, always, we talk about the collateral. I think it even came up during the equity questions. If I don't have a $1 million house, like, Cesa, what do I do? <laughs> if, and then he also had a friend who was willing to guarantee the loan for him. How does that play out if I don't have any such guarantor to help? So why do you need both the guarantor and collateral? Uh, for the loan, is there any other way to get this done? And I, I'm already setting up the, the questions, and I believe they're going to be discussed, and, and I'm going to read Hello, them. and so hi. Are we safe? Okay. Again, uh, clearly we, as we seek to engage banks for, and also like the equity investors, there was a question about your, your business plan, your documentation, um, and in this particular case, audited financials would be quite important if you want to engage a bank. Uh, some, several, you talk to businesses and most of them will tell you, I have some records. Uh, I don't have funds to do business audits, so they are not done. And in fact, we have a similar case of a business we are supporting right now to engage, to raise funds. And the main deal stop at the moment is the fact that for three years, there is no audit of his records, and typically banks would require to see that kind of thing before they do that. So even for businesses, before we really start throwing points, why do they ask for so much documentation? It's important we keep that in mind. That, that gives an idea of systems we have in place, systems, structures, record keeping, bookkeeping. It is not just because they want to see the historicals in the past but they want to understand that there are systems in place to make sure if you take the money, these systems will help you make the best of that fund and pay that money back. Um, part of systems and structures in place is also about accountability, um, that you're not the only person who handles the checkbook, you draw the budget, you spend on it, and you also account for that. But there are layers of accountability um, who handles the finances. You don't need to pack all your things um, because you could always come back to do that. So the table can go off, please. You don't need the table. Uh, it can go off, yes. So there's a chess, and then I would gladly welcome our panelists for this session as the chairs are set up. If the chairs could be shifted a bit this way towards me, so we would want to, do we have microphones as well? Okay. So your excellency, ladies and gentlemen, I would at this stage welcome my panel. First, in no particular order, we have Mr. Mark Champon, Head of Commercial Banking of FNB Bank. Can we clap as he comes? And then, we have Mr. Kingsley Adofuado, of S head of SME Banking at Ecobank. Hello, hello. Then we have Olivier Bailey Bechet. Forgive my French if it's not correct. <laughs> CEO of Advanced Group. 
In French, we were taught some words. They are double L, but it's pronounced Y. My French, I would say je, like je got. <laughs> so I don't know which one is correct for this name. Then we have Mr. Kwabna Boatin, Divisional Director of Corporate Institutional Banking at Fidelity Bank. So welcome, Kwabna. And then Jones, Jones Damo, Zona Head Business Banking Access Bank. Jones, coming from the back, okay. And last but not the least, we have Daniel Sapon, Head of Corporate Coverage at Society General. Daniel Sapon. Can we do a big round for all of them as they take this stage? And can we have one extra chair, please? We needed more of them because there are so much money sitting in the banks that we want to access. And, and all of these men together command a lot of money. They sit on so much money. And I put it to you that I'm right. <laughs> that we need to take money from you for these businesses. And, and I, I, I would, very, very harmless question. Why don't you give us so much money when we come to you? Who wants to take that question? <laughs> it's not your money. Okay, please explain further. Um, you know, as a bank, we collect money from people and then we only end up money. So we are custodians of other people's money. So it's not like Fidelity has um, a, uh, a pot of gold that is given out. But then we have to be sure that we, do, we are very prudent in keeping your money and then making good use of your money. But we see you have very big, big, big buildings, nice houses. Fidelity is putting one all over the place. Rage area, Ecobank has a very nice one around Rage. SG is launching another huge facility next week. Yeah. So you have money. What is the challenge? I think Ecobank can answer the very <laughs> lovely Ecobank, look at the building at Rage. It's a huge edifice. That money can sponsor almost every business in this room. Why don't you give it to us? <laughs> Hello, good afternoon all. Good afternoon, Echo Bank. <laughs> Nicholas, um, sorry, Nelson. Nelson, yes. Yes, um, yes, yes we there. have a, a big edifice and a beautiful one as that. And <laughs> the one at Rage is huge. Exactly. So I'd want to tie that in as to why we are here today um, to get to understand how we can support businesses the better and the more. If you take Ecobank, Ecobank started some three decades ago from a small office somewhere in Ridge, and 25 years on, put up that edifice. So it didn't happen overnight. It tells a story of how businesses can start small with the right support, grow and transform to become the regional and the continental giants that we seek to. And that is the same way as a bank. We seek to replicate that which we've gone through to support SMEs of today, girl. Thank you. I'm not convinced, but I, I will go to Mark. Mark, FNB Ghana. We need loans. What do you look out for when we come to you? Why do you ask for both equity, sorry, both collateral as well as a guarantor? Well, uh, good, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so First National Bank is, is part of the First Run Group from South Africa. Yeah. Uh, we mainly play in the Southern region. Uh, our inroad into West Africa is mainly into Ghana and Nigeria, where we operate as Run Merchant Bank. Now, I, I really don't like starting uh, this question with security, because security usually is not the core of why we lend. Uh, the reason why we lend, first of all, is to partner the business to move from one stage to the next. Uh, in, in FMB, we have something we call start, run, grow. Uh, at every stage in the business, that is what is required. Uh, and we are not coming in as equity partners, we are coming in as funding gap partners. We are providing some form of gap that you lack at the point in time. So it's not really about security. Mm. We need to understand what the requirement really is before it comes to security. And there are many forms of security. There could be tangible, there could be intangible security. And all of that comes to play, but it has to be case by case. It has to be 
based on the need of the client, based on the structure of the client, based on the transaction itself, all will determine what we will look for in terms of how we secure the lending. And I think that is where it, it becomes more critical. But more importantly is the cash flows. And in the earlier discussion, there was question or mention around documentation, records. Those are critical. When you sit in front of an entrepreneur or a business person, and they can actually churn out the numbers right from the top of their head, and they can actually provide evidence to support that. It makes you, the lender, more comfortable to be able to say, look, this is something we can do without necessarily looking so much at the collateral, but looking at how we can partner this business for a long haul. Okay, so you mentioned tangible and intangible security. What could be intangible? Of course, you normally would ask you for landed property. Da, da, da. What is intangible security in this case? So in some cases, you can have things like debtors. Uh, so your debtors, I don't really see them. But if I do trust, the debtor book is something I can lend against. Uh, there could be things like corporate guarantees, especially if you are uh, a small business in Ghana, but you have some significant shareholders who have other businesses and are willing to provide some form of collateral you can take that as well. And then we can look at the landed buildings, the machinery, which we can all see. So this is basically the difference between the two. OK. Thank you very much. Daniel, your bank is one of the very old banks in the country. Yes. When I was in nursery, I could hear SGSSB before it became what it is now. How are you helping businesses in the country secure loans? And what are the things you require? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so we are part of the French representation in Ghana. And uh, if there is any country that has put everything in terms of finance in a country, I think the French have done very well. And they deserve a clap. I mean, they've done everything from support to all the finance. So we are the commercial arm of everything the French come with. So, what are we doing to support the SMEs? We, we have a lot of offerings. We have, even before you start a business, we have what we call the home of business, yeah. where you can come and sort with us and we'll help you start your journey. So we have partners, we have accounting firms, we have legal firms, we have HR firms, we partner the GRA, we partner the Registrar General. So before you even start, how do I register a business? You can come to our home of business, which is at Osu on the high street, and we can help you start that journey. Beyond that, we also provide support. And like my brother here said, you know, we as bankers, we are not here to think about your landed property, your nice house, like Musa was saying is worth a million dollars. That is not the, the primary concern of ours. Ours is to help you grow a business. So specific to SOCGEN, you could come and for instance, you supply to maybe the French embassy, you have to wait for 30 days before they pay you. You can just bring that invoice to us and there'll be a full forfeiture. And let me explain. You selling the invoice to us and you walk away. In the event that you are not paid, we won't come to you. We will go to the French embassy and say that, well, now the invoice belongs to Societe General and you owe us money. So we can give you that. We, we can finance your, your pre before you get to even issuing an invoice. So once they give you a purchase order, we will finance that for you. And then before you supply, and once you supply, we can come in and intermediate, give you the money, you go away, you prefer your new, your new order. So then you don't wait to do that. So those are the things that we do. If you need a vehicle, don't take money to go and buy a car. Come, we'll give you a leasing solution. So you, it's all part of your working capital support. And those are the things that we do as a bank to support the SMEs. Okay. I doubt most of us know what the banks do in the room. So I'll give everybody a chance. So Olivier, uh, advance. How do you support SMEs and startups? Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you. Uh, first of all, we are not a bank. Uh, we are a savings and loans company, so it's slightly different. Uh, Advance is part of an international group uh, of uh, working in financial inclusion in nine countries in uh, Africa and Asia. And we are providing uh, financial services, especially loans, to micro and small businesses. So 
Uh, if I look at the situation of Musa, uh, I mean, I've heard a lot of things that you need to open an account, uh, you need to save before being able to have access to a loan, you need a landed property to have access to a loan. Uh, I think uh, in our business uh, advance, we are trying to see things differently because we know most of our clients, they are in the informal sector, so they don't have records most of the time. Uh, if they have a sales record, we consider us as lucky. Uh, so uh, they don't have landed property uh, and they sometimes don't want to save because they want and they need money now for their business. So asking them to save for six months is not really relevant. So uh, we are trying to offer uh, a different approach uh, uh, to MSMEs so that uh, a client can come to us uh, he, he needs only to have uh, six months of business behind uh, him uh, and we can start discussing on what is the, the loan purpose, what is the need of the client and we have our own uh, methodologies and approach to assess the business, uh, the capacity of the client to repay the loan with the cash flow generated by the business uh, and it's, it's mostly based on that that uh, we, we, we partner with our clients mm. and we try to support them uh, gradually. Of course, the more formalized you are, uh, etc., it's always uh, uh, an asset and it could help to have access to higher amounts. But usually we have a gradual approach with our clients so that we can grow uh, together with them uh, and support them along the way uh, on their business. Thank you, Olivier. Please get rid of your questions. You're going to have a chance very soon. Um, Kingsley, can we know how EcoBank supporting SME startups? Thank you, Nelson. Yeah. So EcoBank, as I had indicated earlier, specific to Ghana, we are over three decades old. Uh, we are part of an African banking group. We refer to ourselves as a pan-African banking group with presence in over 33 African countries. Uh, we support three streams of businesses, corporate, commercial and consumer banking. Within the commercial banking space is where most of our SME businesses sit. And our goal as a bank is to provide both financial and non-financial support to the SMEs. And again, uh, during the drama or the sketch, one thing I picked up was issues around collateral, issues around uh, bank not willing to provide the support in time of need. Another thing that's jumped out at me was sector, agri-sector. And with that as a bank specific to the SME business, we look at the SME business with a sectorial lens and we look at it with an impact lens. On a sectorial basis, there are key sectors we believe that within the markets that we play in, example being in Ghana, they are sectors that are very crucial to the economies. In Ghana, we look at agri as one sector. We look at education as a sector, health, construction. We also look at those involved in trade and commerce, FMCGs. That is not to say that the other sectors are not material, are not critical to us. We look at them, but these are the primary um, sectors that we believe are critical. And again, looking at these sectors and SMEs that play within these sectors, one key thing we look at is your activity within a value chain. So I'll go back to use Agri as an example. If you are an Agri SME, you come to the bank and you need support. The first thing we would want you to establish is identifying within which value chain you as the actor is playing in. If you pick a crop, say maize, within the value chain of maize, what am I, the SME, doing within that value chain? How am I connected to the other actors? And how does that connection establishes and solidifies the cash flows that I seek to present based on which we seek to provide the fund and support to you? Are we good? Hello. Can we try? Hello. Right. Okay. So being clear and setting on the value chain you are in is critical for us in providing support to you. Again, it's not always about the availability of records keeping or numbers or documents to support your acts. We 
get to understand what you have at that present moment. In most cases, most of our SMEs are semi-formal or informal. We need to bring them to the standard we believe that they are ready for market. So we support you. If you are an SME that today, for instance, you are playing in the digital economy, you are a social entrepreneur, you are a business also that is selling on social media, uh, our social media channels. As a bank, we are able to provide you that support, both financial and non-financial, to ensure that your business grow. We provide support financially by giving you up to about, say, 200,000 in an unsecured uh, uh, working capital support. Here again, you are not providing collateral. If you work with key value chain actors that have the established capacity, as my brother indicated from SG, we also are able to provide you with that support, discounting your invoices without collateral, to ensure that you reinvest in the business and grow. One critical area that is of challenge for SMEs is expansion. How do they move from just working capital support to CAPEX to ensure their businesses grow and take advantage of opportunities in country and on the continent as well? We say talk to us. We have tailor-made solutions for you. It is not generic, it's not a cross board. Don't let collateral be a stumbling block. It's, there, it's at the tail end of the need. Let's understand your cash flow. Let's understand how connected you are or how linked you are within a value chain. Let's understand the sector you play in, the capacity of the workforce that you work with, and your own understanding of the business that you want to drive. And we will be happy to provide you with the support. Thank you. Thank you. This sounds very exciting. But we'll go into the details. We will don't peel the orange. Uh, Jones, how do you also help us? Okay, sorry, yes, Jones. Okay, so um, my name is Jones, yes. I represent Access Bank. And uh, we are the only Nigerian uh, bank out of Nigeria present today at this program. And I believe it's a sign of recognition in terms of what we are doing in the SME space. Well done now. Yes, thank you, Olga. <laughs> So what, what we've been doing for the SMEs in terms of support to them, we started this year observing the impact, for instance, of COVID on their businesses. So we set off by undertaking SME workshops. We did the first one here. It was exciting. We followed up with a capacity building opportunity for the SMEs. Then we got invitation from the Kumasi SME team that they liked what we do here. So we went to Kumasi to also organize one for them and a workshop followed up. Then just this week, we were in Takradi to do another workshop. What we are doing at the workshop is just to sensitize the SMEs that, yes, you need financing to do your business. It's one of the key things that they require. However, it is not only financing that can push your business to the next level that you require. Basic understanding of bookkeeping, a bit of corporate structures and corporate governance alongside you also trying to employ the digital platform to promote your businesses. Because nowadays people only engage mainly in uh, essential transactions. They don't do a lot of luxury or want needs. They, sorry, they follow the needs instead of the want. So we decided to explain to them how they can use that platform of WhatsApp uh, business, um, Twitter, Facebook, to even uh, promote what they are doing. The other thing that we did also, following from that, was to just ensure that, based on the feedback we had, we created a business advisory service unit. So we gave them the website. You go there, you type your questions or your needs or any information that you require. You can either be an uh, Access Bank customer or not. Just go there, put your question there, Within 24 hours, you get a feedback. So if it's about inquiry on loans, if it's an inquiry on anything else, there'll be somebody to respond to you 24 hours. If it is a complex request that requires external resource, we'll get back to you in 48 hours. So these are some of the things that we did. Based on feedback also from our SME engagement, we came up with a product which we call the Instant Business Loan. We realized that people don't need, don't have the collateral to do certain basic things. Somebody needs a top-up 
as an SME to pay a check. Somebody needs something small to clear goods at the port or pay for some goods from somebody. So that instant business loan package you said, we'll give it to you for three months, no collateral. What we focus on is your cash flow and your stocks. Then based on that, we can advance that um, support to you. We also came up with a business bundle package. We realized that most of our traders, or our SME people, they are doing a lot in their areas of business. Somebody invests 100,000 in the business. Fire, burglary, everything is gone. So we decided to bundle an insurance package with the work they do. So for instance, you've invested 100,000. We say that we can give you an insurance cover over your goods, your stocks, in case of fire burglary, to the tune of 50,000 by just paying 300 CDs for the whole year. So for 300 CDs in a year, you get a cover of up to 50,000 CDs. You also get a personal accident cover. Up now to you are doing commercials. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just telling you what we do, actually. So these I'll are give some you an invoice for what you have said. The, the insurance package, I'll give you, Pascal, he deserves an invoice. Is marketing other things? No, beyond it's, it's a bank insurance product. So it's the bank and then the insurance company okay. that we are doing. So they ride on the on the back of the bank. So that's what we do together. So these are things that we are doing to support the SME uh, space at the moment. I think if subsequent yes, questions we'll come, come up, back we'll take to it up. So thank you very much. We'll be taking questions shortly, but we would have Covenant Fidelity also share what they do. But can I say by hands those who want to go first, so the microphone could be brought. Um, so we can have one mic here, and then far end. So somebody could. So one, two, three in that order. As Kwabna present. So yeah. I'll start before I talk about what we can do for SMEs or what we do for SMEs. Is I want to tell the SMEs that we relate the way they are. Fifteen years ago, we we're just like SMEs. So Fidelity Bank started off from ground zero. Fifteen years ago, the founders stepped out came out to the business plan, engaged institutional shareholders, I mean, investors, individuals, international investors, sold the idea to them that, look, within this number of years, we'll move from A to B. This is what we want to do. This is what we understand about the terrain. And that's the same thing that we want to sell to the SMEs. They need to understand your terrain, understand what you want. So when you come to the bank, the bank will buy into your vision. In so doing, we moved from ground zero 15 years ago, and now we are on the top four banks in this country. So that tells you that when you're committed and you understand what you want to do, you're able to go out there, sell your ideas, and people buy into your vision, and just like that, we'll be able to move ahead where you want to get to. In supporting SMEs, over the years, we've been working closely with and, and SNV and then the Dutch Embassy in supporting the WASH project. And this one project that we've been consistently be part of. And this goes out to support not just SMEs, but MSMEs, and also some um, non-financial uh, institutions. We also supported, um, again, what we call the Medical Credit Fund. So these are, this is a non-profit fund that supports both, uh, the, especially those in the medical fields, pharmacies, small businesses, those who have outstanding in terms of the National Insurance Bill. Again, the bank went through that to support each and individuals that come through that. Again, the last thing that we're doing now is, why don't we give back to society? And what are we doing? We set up what's called the Young Entrepreneur Fund, whereby we are looking at young people. If you are 14 below, I hope you see yourself as young anyway. So those 14 below and then women in various sectors, what can we do for you? You come in, we have a team that will support you at an interest rate of just 10%. Because the whole idea is that, look, we need to give back to society. We've been there before. We understand their pain. We understand what it takes for you to move from one business to another, to get investors to buy into your vision. So we're also ready to buy into the visions of the SMEs. Not even just SMEs, but the MSMEs, so as to grow with them. Because the beauty is that we like to stand back and say, look, we picked up company A, saw them move from A, to be, and then now they are where they are, and they're now expanded their reach into the neighboring countries. So that's what we are here for, and we are ready to take any questions and how best we can support you. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you for what you're doing. Um, let's get into a litmus test of the audience. 
Uh, right, I'll take you, Hello. Vivian, right? Yeah, I remember the name. Yes, please go ahead. You want my name again? <laughs> please go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm not particularly impressed with their um, things they've said okay. so far. It just feels like it's, um, it's a record being played to us. For starters, if you look at what Daniel has said, comparing it to what Olivier said, they are both French. Daniel is trying to tell us he wants to help us. We don't want any help, we want support. We are not coming to beg you for, you for your money. The money that's not yours, other people's money that is with you, we are not begging you for it. So tell us you will support us rather than you are going to help us. So please, next time you are talking to us, don't use the word help. We don't want your help. We want support. Noted. Now the main issue. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am told that uh, there's a law which says that you don't need collateral for loans up to about a million Ghana cities. The, it's so silent that nobody talks about it. You can lend up to a million Ghana cities without collateral. Maybe the banks are worried that people will take their money and run with it. So they would rather not lend away. But it's done abroad, in the UK, in Europe, all over the world, it's done without collateral sometimes. What I want to know is, now that we are going to digitization, everybody has a house number, it's easy to track people, when are they going to start giving us loans without collateral? Because the answer they give us all the time is, you could run, we, could not, we, may, we may not find you, and we want to know when they're going to stop this. Thank you very much. Thank I think you. the question is asked very succinctly. Uh, let's give it to the lady here so that once, go okay, you have the mic and the floor, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank our bankers. Your, your talk is too sweet. <laughs> but I think after taking that sweetness, at the tail end, it's very bitter. <laughs> very, very bitter. You see, we all understand that banks sell money to make money. We know we are not a charitable organization. But then also, the way you treat businesses in the country to is questionable. Questionable in the sense that you want the soft touch businesses to handle retail, hard hoc facility, salary loans, then you are making your money. But the core businesses that boost the economy, you don't want to know. You tell us you are high risk area. You are high risk. We are not prepared to give you long-term facility. But it's only long-term facility that can turn this our economy around. That can enable SMEs, entrepreneurs, to create their job opportunities for our young graduates and then uh, population. So now, a lot has been said. But nobody touched on long-term funding. That's what we need. We don't need the hard work retail loan, six months, one year, maximum, quarter, 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 one and a half years. We don't need it. You give facility with that grace period. So how can one work and pay? Do you consider all these factors? Or because we are in need of it and you have it, you doesn't care. If you like, take it. If you like, leave it. That's the approach we are seeing. Okay. And I'll touch on uh, Ecobank. I said, okay, please, I'll do that. Brief. Ecobank was, was created by Chamber of Commerce. ECOWAS Chamber of Commerce. 
which brought telco bank. But they don't even want to know about chamber members and chamber businesses. So I think moving forward, Mr. Ecobank, you got to look at this and address it well for us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vivian. And then we have two hands at the back. So we take five at a go and then answer them. Yes, Vivian. OK. Um, so when Mr. Kwabena was speaking, he made mention that we can walk into the Fidelity Bank and then um, talk to them or tell them about our business plans and then they would give us support. Or oh, in case I heard wrong, okay, so that's correct. So I would say um, for a lot of us entrepreneurs, some of us do have business that we've already started on our own, which wasn't easy to begin with. But then we also have other business ideas too. So is it only with fidelity that we can come in and then sell our ideas to you for financing? Ideas being we haven't started yet and we don't have the money for it. We only have the idea, we have the plan. All that we need is for you to give us the money. So if it is something that Fidelity does, is it also something that the other banks present also offer where we can freely just walk into any branch and then speak to you about our ideas and in return receive funds? Thank you very much. So emphasis is on idea stage, nothing done yet. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is uh, Samuel Akwe. And then there is a hand at the back, so if the mic can go there as the last person. Yes. I'm Samuel Akwe Um I'm to coconut oil processing. And uh, I do end there. Also recycle the coconut shells into domestic products like uh, packaging materials for shea butter and other products, teacups, pots, and etc. Well, I think uh, my brother, big brother, has said it all, because what I heard from our banker sitting up there, oh, actually, it's a, it's, it's a border to my soul. <laughs> yes, because they don't act, they don't, they don't act according to how they talk. You get to the office, they will tell you different stories. They will, they, they will drive you away. They won't have time to sit down with you to assess your business and see whether it's viable or it's not. I quite remember after this uh, pandemic struck uh, business that was, uh, I think, in February. I needed some soft loan to just, you know, support me to pay my workers. I went to Access Bank, and it's my banker. And they told me, unless I save 25,000 series a month, or they will not give me any support. I was surprised. They didn't even sit me down to assess my, you know, my cash flow or whatever. And they turned me off. I was very sad. And I decided to withdraw, withdraw my, or close my account. But you see, I took my time. So for Mr. Jones, to come out with these sweet words. <laughs> Maybe this time they have learned a lesson. Bankers in Ghana don't want to grow businesses, but they want to harvest income. Therefore, they look at already made businesses. It's a sad situation we are finding. We find ourselves in this country. I think but I tell you, we have potential businesses, eh? Yes. So I, I tell you, better sit up. Okay. So the point is how to grow businesses, you. right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll take the last one for this round, and then we can come back. I'm Raymond Ohemi, 
from Rage and Littoral Services. As Mr. Cabral was talking, he's my banker, Fidelity Bank. <laughs> I mean, I've had a numerous of encountering with them from Amprobi branch. I had a supply from Narcotic Control Board. It was about 15,000 cities, and I need 9,000 cities in addition. My banker told me that he's going to ask the MD for approval if I will be able to get that loan. But if I need that loan too, my money that I've been saving in the bank is not huge. And I was a startup business. So I nearly cried because whenever I, <laughs> whenever I had money, I just pushed it into the account. I even transferred my salary account to Fidelity because I was using it to see whether they can help me to grow my business. Up to date, I don't know if now that my approval will be coming <laughs> or not. And subsequently, I lose the contract. So the bankers in Ghana try to help us. At times, we have to look at the work and the cash flow of the person, how prominent the person is. And then you help him because somebody to be on a business registration document and SNIT and other things, it means that person is seriously want to do something. Thank but you they very. just look at the tabletop ones that they can give them 200 cities and take about 500 cities at the end of the month from them. They are those people, they work with them. But Ray, I think your question has yes. been asked, right? Yes. Thank you very much. I, I think Kwabina would answer that. But I don't want us to delve into a, a litany of just some of these same stories. We want to really change the narrative. How do we move on from here? What do we have to do to access the opportunities available? So if the next round we could change the tempo a little bit and not go into a plethora or choir of just challenges. So there are about five questions. Some of them were specific to Ecobank, to access to fidelity, um, giving loans, of up to one million without collateral, and I'm told there's a law back in that. I need to research for that law. I've not heard it before. So, can we your help, <laughs> gentlemen? <laughs> okay, Nelson, uh, yes, maybe I will start and colleagues would continue. Yes. So maybe from the last comment on the loan of one million without collateral, in my mind, I think he might be referring to the unsecured ratio, that's unsecured percentage of the portfolio uh, that will, a bank can give out. And that one million is not to say one million to a customer. How many one millions can you give? And what is the ratio to your net worth? So that ought to be looked at. And in terms of giving facilities without collateral, again, we take it from the standpoint of a need. We tend to be often generic in the commentary, in the situational analysis. But I would plead with us, SMEs, let's move away from that and look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Speaking about Ecobank, we've had instances where we've supported startups. How have we done that? By way of partnerships. Today we are here with Popaco. We work with Popaco on opportunities that we both see are viable and need support. The banks in Ghana definitely also do have a limitation in terms of the type of funding available and the need on the market. If a business is to invest today or put money in the bank today, it's either on a current account or if it's an investment, averagely six to one year. But then there's a funding need for an SME that really need funding for, say, about three to five years or even 10 years. How do you close this mismatch? The only way to do that is to look at partnerships, and that is what we do the most in such instances. I can count a number of startups that we have supported, in as much as that is not the front banner for a commercial bank. I would say, as an SME, at an ideation stage, 
there are different types of funding you can put into a business. At an ideation stage, debt could harm or kill that dream. However, in some instances, debt could support in realizing that dream. So engage us and let's have a deeper understanding on what that idea is. For all you know, we have partnerships that could help unlock the opportunity in that idea and bring it to light. So again, I will plead, let's not generalize. Let's pick it on a case-by-case -case basis. The other question with the Ecobank had to do with um, Ecomas, I think it's the chamber. Chamber of Commerce. Yes, Ecobank yeah. is a member of the chamber. Maybe we've not been that, uh, uh, we've changed our representation in terms of who comes um, for the chamber meeting. But we do support quite a number of members of the chamber from business expansion or from business startups. Quite a number of them we've also supported that sit within the space of the 1D1F project. So there are quite a number of projects out there that fall in the space of the chamber. So we recognize our roots and we'll continue to do more because there's room to do more. We will continue at that. And to the lady that asked the question as to whether you could come in for support at Ecobank. We have what we call the Elevate Dex. When I spoke earlier, I touched on, we looking at the, the business from two angles, what you seek to do and the impact of what you do. In terms of impact, we look at uh, uh, parameters that helps or drives towards the achievement of the UN SDG goals. So gender is a top banner for us. So if what you are doing as a business touch on that impact story would want to listen to you. If you are a business that you are predominantly owned by a woman or you have a lot of employees in your organization that are predominantly women or again you are producing and your end product is to support the women economy. We would say talk to us, there are opportunities in that space. It is not always financial because sometimes you need that support to unlock the opportunities and make even an access to market easier and more efficient. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Thank you. And there's a question on the appetite for long-term financing. I don't know who wants to address that. Okay, maybe I can take it up. Yeah. Um, I think partially Kingsley has addressed that issue uh, in terms of what we, is, all that we do is take those who have money and give it to those who do not have money. The one who has the money, if he comes and, like Kingsley said, is that I'm giving my money to you for only up to a year. When I give it to you for a period of five years, by the time he comes and he says, I want my money, I may not be able to get the money to pay it back. So we need to find a way to support. And that is one of the challenges that we have as a nation. Our deposits are short term in nature but we have a lot in terms of supporting the long-term needs of the business. Having said that, we do. We support you to do or fund your CAPEX. The challenge I have seen is that most of you, you start up and it's like, okay, I want to put up this plant. Sometimes even the technical support, what, what is the plant going to do? How is it going to, the setup going to be? Who is going to give me that technical support? Most of the time, we don't do that. And just last week, I was talking to a customer of ours who came and said, the people nearly collapsed my business because they just shipped a plant to him, okay? They got it installed, and they realized that some parts were missing. They were calling the guys, they won't come because you've been paid for the equipment in advance. The guy, you don't, you don't even have any support in terms of the defend liabilities and all those things. There's no claim. So what I would say is that, Chief, if you want to do, set up a plan to manufacture anything, it's important you talk to your bankers. It's important they get technical help to enable you determine the type of equipment, the capacity, and everything. One of the issues why we also sometimes don't want to come in is that you may have started. Bank A gave you a million. When you set up, you said, well, it's going to cost me a million. 
Along the line, the guy starts and is sorry, the person starts and is a one story thing. By the time you get there, they've gone to level three. And when level three is there, they come and say, Oh, I went back to my original bank. They said they can't support me again. Can you come in and support me? By that time, the cash flows, everything, the analysis might not support you to be able to do a three level structure. So what we analyzed was based on one level structure. So as you do those things, then it's like, okay, the banks don't want to support. The banks have realized that when we do the support, either we need to stretch the repayment or the capacity is just not there. So what I would say is that we provide long-term support in terms of financing your need, but it's important you engage your banker. It's important sometimes we even seek technical support outside of the bank to help you in structuring your, your, your financing and in making sure that whatever equipment you're going to buy, there is all the indemnities that you need to the extent that in case there is an issue, we can always go back to those people and tell them to come and maybe remedy the situation. So we do provide long-term support. Now, last of all, Everybody is saying the banks don't want to give money. If the banks don't give money, I'm not sure all of us will be wearing our jackets. Because, truth be told, you pay us. When you put your money there, and when you come for the loans, that's how we, we get paid. So we are there to give the money. The question is, can we find a common ground where we can all agree that this is what we are financing, and then it goes to the core of the record keeping, it goes to the core of even redefining what we really want to do. And when we all understand what we want to do, and we know at the end of the day that whatever risk we've identified, we can fully mitigate, I believe that we'll continue to provide the support to you, and you would also continue to pay us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, most of the questions previously asked have been addressed. But unless anybody wants to comment. If not, I'll take the next or final round of questions from the audience. You want to respond to it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, thank you for your comment. Um, I didn't catch, I've forgotten the name or I didn't catch the name. I think comments like this or real life experiences like this has helped us, has helped us as, as a bank, access bank to evolve and be able to put in better products and better responses to some of the issues that you, you have said. So I take the feedback. I don't know when this situation happened, but I take the feedback and it will form part of our process of ensuring that things get better for other or similar situations that other people face. But I just want to also say that sometimes some of the customers even say we are too thorough. So is, is one side, we're not even looking at your business plan and financials. In another breath, people think that we are too thorough to the point of being academics. Because that's what happens from the time that I've been with Access Bank. We would call for as much detail as we can so that we really understand what you do, what you are projecting to do. Because even though collateral lending, or even though collateral forms part of our lending, we are more focused on the cash flow lending bit. The collateral is a secondary way out. The f emphasis is on how your cash flow will throw out the revenues that will repay the facility. So whoever might have done that to you is rather unfortunate, but I think that it will help us get better and I appreciate the feedback. Uh, just to also say something about our lady who talked about having the idea. Idea stage. Yes, I, I think it's good to have ideas. What I would suggest take the ideas to the next level. Maybe put down a business plan. Get somebody to help you get a business plan. I'm sure some of the banks may not help you just because you have an idea. They want to see how that idea translates into money. That is what basically we are interested in. And that money is supposed to repay something that we give to you. The banks, the monies we have, we always see it as being a custodian of your family funds. If my family money is sitting with me, how I give it out, I have to be cautious. 
and ensure that what I'm giving out comes back. So I really need to understand it. And a business plan will really throw out some of these things. People say it's expensive to do a business plan or get somebody. But really, it is also going to help you on certain things that you might have missed in your idea. Probably you didn't consider certain expenses that may accrue from what you intend to do. You're just looking at, if I import this, I'm going to get this. When you draw a business plan, certain things that you miss can come to fruition. Uh, lastly, on what my colleague also said, in terms of making money. Yes, we make money when we lend to you. But sometimes we don't lend to you because we don't want to take advantage of you. We look at the scenarios and we see that giving you this money will not help you. It will rather put you under pressure. We may take advantage and seize your items, which is not what we want to do. We want to be a very reasonable partner in all that we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just want to, um, the gentleman who spoke about uh, Fidelity Bank, first apologies, but after this, we'll have a discussion on that. But I'm very sure that there are others who have also said very good things in terms of the support that we're giving to them. So it's uh, two-way streets, and we will do well to attend to everyone's needs. Now, on the bit of collateral, as banks, we are not in the business of taking your building and selling. If you listen to Musa's story, Musa said, I'm not going to give you my building. I'm not going to give you my house. Immediately he gave in and said, I'll give you my house. The next thing he said was, I'll work hard to pay the principal and then the interest. Most often than not, that gives the person that additional commitment. We've seen people come in, take a facility, and from day one, you know very well that the person does not want to pay. And they just tell you that the business has run down. I have these outstandings. Go chase my creditors or my debtors. However, when you take the person's security, we have two loads of houses out there, warehouses. We are not able to sell. Because as a bank, our core business is not to sell property. But it's just to give you that additional comfort. Let the person know that I have a skin in the game. I have some commitment in it. And I'll work very hard to make sure that this loan does not go bad. So please, we are not here to pick up your building, your car, or anything of your sort. Because our business is to take money and then earn money. And then, like they said, look after ourselves, possibly. Thank you. That's good clarity. Thank you very much. Um, I think the mic is at the back. If there are, OK. So to be fair, let's go to the back and come forward subsequently. So there are some wavy. OK, please, yes. Okay. Can we have a mic at the back as well? Hello, yeah. good Hello. afternoon. <laughs> OK, go yeah. and after that, you come to you. Sorry, yeah. I'm Jamal from, um, I'm a farmer. Um, I want to find out from the banks. It's like mostly they are afraid of farmers. <laughs> well, if farmers come to them for maybe support, they feel like not investing with them. And our activity is mostly a time-based kind of thing. It's a timely kind of activity. Such so that uh, if you're looking at cash inflows and other things, you wouldn't be seeing that much in our activities. But it's such so that when we are ready to do, when we get our farm inputs and we send them there, we only start to realize our cars inflows after harvesting, after harvesting. And like I'm speaking now, uh, down there at the north, people are so funny difficult to get um, equipment or treasures to trace their farm and harvest their produce at the farms. And some are being set on um, fire. Uh, some of my colleagues um, made that they harvested and they were waiting for treasures to do have been set on fire, and they are at a loss. So I realized that at our farm's area, they want to see how will the banks come in to support SMEs or startups that are into farming activities and other things. That's my question. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes, I'm Micah Tulevu, and uh, I represent a venture called MACD Ventures. We are into current agro-processing. And uh, I first time go to the Chamber of Commerce because, uh, as uh, previous speakers said earlier, we've been struggling to look for long-term financing to most of our need to sponsor artists, to promote entrepreneurship in the country. But my question here may go directly to SG, because in a similar presentation, as one uh, speaker was saying earlier, that they wish some of these sponsors could deal with us directly. We had one at the Labadi, we just in August this year, sponsored by Chamber, and one of the presenters were IFC, 
And they made that know, like Probaco is doing today, that they also has partners, and one of their partners are LG Bank. And uh, right from there, I approached them, laid our needs for us to do. They asked, usual, the first criteria is open account with us. So we know that song, so I prepared and I quickly, you know, opened that account and we started, you know, initially, being, like, the uh, region wasn't the promising that they could be, but we followed through to now. Uh, to be very specific, it looked like most of the words here sounds to me like a sales talk because we try to walk the walk, it doesn't happen that way. Specifically, uh, like I said, we produce... So specifically, what's the question? Specifically, like you mentioned uh, issues like uh, uh, PO advance, like if you have patients or that, they can advance it, or if you have invoice, it can be uh, discounted or whatsoever. Specifically, in my case, just last week, we got order from China Mall to supply. Already we have been supplying them, but for the season, the order came more than we expected. And I showed the previous supply invoice to these bankers that can support us to go and buy another granite right now to supply for the season. They told me no, they don't do that. So unless uh, they process a facility as to bring later, they are going through later. So I want to see practicality of what you are telling us now and write on the ground. Is there a native supposed to do with the banks that we are not doing right? Or uh, some of these words are on paper, but they are not yet on the ground. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Okay. My name is Koshi. Um, the, I actually run a, a, a cooperative, a farming cooperative. I wanted to find out if the banks can also take something like, uh, uh, what do you call it, this secret financial guarantee in place of collateral because many a times when you go to them, especially if you go to them and you have all some of your document, they always want to, you know, pin you down with what? Collateral. That is when they are telling you that they are not ready to give you the funds. But I want, okay. there are so many institutions that are ready to give the financial uh, security. I wanted to find if they would be interested in some of those things because some of, somebody like me, I want a very huge money for my cooperative. I think and the question has been asked, right? The second, okay, can I, that's, that's kindly the take only one question from that's you? That's the first, no, but the uh, second one was to Can I take only one question from you, please, if you don't mind? Thank you very much. There's so many hands in the room, so to be fair, um, thank you very Hi, much. Good My name you. is Philomena Pia. Okay, I'm lost. Okay, Philomena, and then we come to the back, yes. Yes, uh, I'm into garment in industry, manufacturing. And uh, one thing I've seen about the Ghanaian banks is that um, you go to, they don't really understand businesses, to be honest with you. You go, they are, and they are, I, I don't blame them because they are not business people. So I would prefer the government to open banks, ex ex exclusive banks for businesses. And then they should put businessmen at their affairs in positions so that when we go there and we talk, they will understand our business. <laughs> and then secondly, uh, most of them don't know um, how to do international trade finance. I have gotten an export order for $5 million uh, to sell T-shirts to export it to US for almost a year now. I've not gotten any bank that will support me. They said uh, Exim Bank, they said uh, whatever and whatever. The names are so big, you go there, you give your proposal, everything to them, even my um, the one that wants the things says he will do advanced payments, but he will do it in an LC form. He sent a draft of the LC. I took it to my bank, and they said, no, we, we don't do these things here. So up to now, I've not gotten any bank that will support me in my export. So I, I would suggest here that the government should get an exclusive bank for, I mean, SMEs, and then the, uh, the interest rate is killing us. When you're doing export, your margins are very small. So when you pay something like a 17%, 24%, you can't meet the international market. We say we are competitors. And we normally, when we go out there, our things are expensive because of the interest rate. The, uh, uh, like the, somebody was saying, uh, they have special things for women. 
A bank came to uh, one of the chambers. He said, oh, if, if you don't have an account with us, come to us. We will give you money because you are a woman entrepreneur. I went there, and they, they, they asked me, uh, what is your security? Or, and I said, okay, I can give you my car if you want. He said, no, they don't want movable security. I said, how many women? How burdens too? So there are some of the things that becomes an impediment in our businesses. So if they want Ghana or the SMEs to grow, I think you have to change the style and the old method that you people are asking for uh, a collateral or security or the rest. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so can I give a Hi, good, good afternoon. My name is Nishra Buta from Diba Marketing Partners. Um, okay, so I think from the discussion we've had so far, I see a lot of disconnect between what the banks want SMEs to know and what SMEs know. So my question is, what interventions, what policies, or what trainings are banks in Ghana putting forward to train SMEs? I work with a lot of SMEs, and I find out that these are things people don't know. These are things a lot of them have no idea about. Okay. The second question goes to Nelson. Can I? Is there a reason why we have an all-male panel? Thank you. Thank you very much. I will Hello. answer that question over lunch. Oh, good afternoon. <laughs> Please, my name is Masawood. Um, when Mr. Jones was doing his presentation, he talked of um, capacity building and some training that you organize here. I'm from Kumasi. I did not hear anything about it. I mean, like, I have an account with Access Bank. So I don't know how you get to know the people that you organize such workshop and training for, because I did not hear anything about it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will take questions only from ladies to compensate for my sins. <laughs> Last sort of question, only ladies, I promise you, only ladies. Yes, there's a lady here, there's a lady there. Three ladies and I'm done. <laughs> Okay, my name is Mary Lancelot. Okay. Um, Mary. I'm with MLC Fashion. I want to find out from the banks that um, is there a way they are helping businesses in the new regions? I'm asking this because I'm coming from Nalerigu Northeast, and there is no bank there. Wow. Thank you very much. So, business opportunity for you guys. There's a lady here, Rosemary. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Rosemary Kofi, and I'm from Build Accounting. We are a startup, but very passionate about SMEs. And my question is on partnerships. So we noticed that a lot of the businesses that use uh, digital accounting tool also need access to competitive credit. So um, we got some funds that we've been able to pilot some cash advances that we give based on the history that they have in our accounting system. And we are curious to know if institution, institutions such as yours would be interested in partnering with us so that we can support more of such uh, SMEs. Thank you. That's a direct pitching. Final lady in the room to take the mic for me, or I take it away. Going one, Go, great. So there's a lady here to the final slot, and then. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. I'm Spenekadako. I'm the founder of Pharma Tribe Company Limited, operating in Northeast region. I, well, I, it's not a question, but I want to talk about uh, the agri sector. Some time ago, I think it was mandated that all banks should have a, an agreed dex. And the agreed dex, I think with time, it became just a saying, you go and there is a, a stand over there, agreed, invest in agreed, that's all. <laughs> because if I'm putting in a loan applications for my farmers, and an agreed dex officer is asking, why is it that we need up to six months for an agric loan that a farmer is using to go and plant maize? Land preparation to harvesting before the farmer is able to sell and what? Get the money to bring it back to us for us to pay. And I have to now explain how we plant maize to that agric tax officer. 
we know at times it's not like you have to employ a loan officer for each sector. But if the great tax is there, I, am, I should know or I should be confident that that person I am speaking to as an agreed desk officer should know something. Thank you very you much. You can go go. <laughs> I'm glad you asked the question. So we're going to take the answers quickly. I, I think Olivia will take the last question and the rest, let's share one question each and then. Okay, maybe uh, the last question and uh, generally on uh, agri financing. Agri yes. um, So in the advanced group and advanced Ghana especially, we are focusing more and more on agri financing. Uh, in Ghana specifically, we are uh, developing value chain approach uh, for now five years. Uh, we have already worked in cocoa, maize, rice, value chain. We are about to start uh, in other value chain like she, uh, mangoes, palm oil, etc. And usually the approach is, is really to work with all the actors of the value chain to partner together, uh, including, of course, with the, the farmers, so that uh, through a resharing mechanism, uh, we are and also working together, we are able to reduce the risk, but also reduce the, the cost, operational cost of working in remote areas, etc. So that we can propose uh, affordable solution for farmers, uh, and this is how uh, we finance input loans uh, in all these uh, crop value chains. Uh, but also, we, ha we have started to work on financing mechanization which is critical uh, need in some uh, uh, value chain like rice, et cetera. Next year, we are going to start to work with uh, a cooperative of women in the she uh, uh, crop. So th there are more and more solutions, and I think uh, we are also going to, uh, by the end of next year, develop a specific uh, individual agri-lending uh, offer. Uh, so I invite uh, uh, farmers and yeah. people in agribusiness to meet with us and to see how we can uh, maybe partner together. Uh, and we have also dedicated an agri train uh, staff <laughs> uh, among you. our teams to, to, to have the discussion and the conversation uh, with you. Uh, just also maybe um, to come back a bit on the, the, the question of bankers not being businessmen uh, and not understanding business, I think we are doing business. Yeah. Uh, a bank is a business. Uh, and I think, like any business, uh, we are also looking at our costs, our expenses, and this will, at the end of the day, explain also the pricing. Uh, so the same way a businessman or businesswoman will look at all the costs and expenses to define the price of the product she's, she's going to sell. So. In our approach uh, in advance, we, we are spending most of our time on the field. 80% uh, of the time we spend is in the market, in the business place, uh, so that we really work on, uh, with the, the client to understand their business, uh, to try to rebuild with them uh, their cash flows, uh, uh, their ba some form of balance sheet, so that we can understand what is their repayment capacity for a loan, and that we can really adjust the support to the need, uh, and also to gradually grow with the business. Mm -hmm. uh, just an example, uh, we have today one of our biggest clients. Uh, I think she had a loan of uh, 600,000 Ghana CD, which is quite a big ticket for us. Uh, she started with us eight years ago with 10,000. Okay. But along the way, uh, we have given her a lot of loans uh, successfully, and she has also gradually uh, uh, structure our business mm. uh, uh, with starting some uh, record keeping, uh, starting also gradually to uh, uh, register our staff with SNIT, this kind of thing that gradually also show that uh, uh, you grow your business but you also grow the structure so that we are more comfortable to support you with larger amount. Uh, of course, in informal sector when there is no documentation, no record keeping, the basis is the structural deficit of information for us. You know everything about your business, we don't know anything. So we need to build that relationship to start to know you uh, uh, step by step, so that step by step we can also grow the financing we can provide to you. Thank you. I think this conversation can really be a bigger one, can go on and on. We've basically been bailed out. 
uh, there are a lot of questions that really demand answers. Uh, what I would do, let me just quickly break protocol, invite Her Excellency, she, we need to pick some feedback online to wrap up. Is it done already? Have you wrapped up online already? Okay. So we can go on? Okay, that's fine. So that's, okay, sorry on that. We can take, so there was a comment on international trade financing. Um, if we can look at that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it was Philomena. Financial guarantees. Anybody yeah, can look at that it well. goes it's together, so yeah. yeah. So um, this to Philomena on the export finance. Um, she indicated her challenges on securing support for export. Yeah. And I'd want to have a discussion with you afterwards. And to the extent that you have ticked some of the boxes that are critical in terms of market linkages. You have a clear market. You have a clear commitment from your off-taker. I'd want to understand what you do. So in this case, the payment rigs that we would say as a bank seems to be covered. We we'll need to understand on the performance side. So let's engage and let's see how best we can structure uh, support for your contract. Okay. In terms of the other financial instrument, the gentleman asked, and I'll delve in that to explain again collateral. Uh, I hear around the room when we say collateral, we all defer to more.